welcome back. My name's Dr. Ash. I'm a doctor and a dentist in the UK. And if you haven't seen, this is my summary series for interviews and how to succeed. So what we're doing is just a bare bones of all the key 13 modules from my online course for how to succeed at MMI and panel interviews. Today, we're going to be looking at the teaching and explanation stations that you will get in MMI interviews. And what we're gonna do, like all of these episodes in the series, is give you the bare bones that you need to go away and revise so that you can perform well. And if you want to check it out more, you can obviously check out my full course where we have 15 hours of videos, including live mock interviews where I critique students on what they did wrong and could do better. And also work throughs of model answers and hot topics and all that sort of stuff. And just quickly before we get started, if you have any questions, I would absolutely love to hear from you. So just pop them in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this, just hit the like button. And if you want more of this, just hit subscribe in the bottom corner and click the notifications to make sure you don't miss out on any of the lessons which I'm releasing in the next few days. So let's get started on these teaching and explanation stations that you're going to get in your medicine interviews in the MMIs. The reason that we have these teaching and explanation stations is because it's essential for pretty much all healthcare workers Workers to be able to teach and explain things to more junior members of staff. And then when you're a doctor yourself, there will be several situations where you're required to explain things to other people. And this could be to other colleagues and not necessarily junior colleagues who you're teaching stuff. They might be journal club where you're teaching current uh, journals and articles and, and new developments to either seniors or fellow members of staff. Then you often have to explain conditions to patients and why you're offering certain treatments. And then again, you'll always have to relay that message back to relatives. So you may have to explain stuff to them as well. So on my course, this whole module revolves around a MMI scenario that I give, which is a live one, and then we critique and go through that. But as this is a summary series, I'm going to just talk through the ways that you can deliver a good explanation when you have an MMI scenario like this. So as I say for all of these, that minute that you have at the start of the MMI station to read and familiarize with yourself with the context of the scenario is absolutely key. It's really important that you take the time to think about what are some of the skills that they're trying to elicit from you and frame the way that you deliver the scenario in a way that ticks all those boxes. So some of the skills that they're trying to elicit from say the teaching side of things is your ability to communicate. Can you take a subject that you know well and put it in layman's terms to someone who's completely new to that idea and has no knowledge knowledge of it before. Then they want to see that you can break it down and we'll come onto a technique that is commonly known as chunking and checking. They may also want to see your ability to develop non-verbal demonstrations. So they might not understand something and they may need you to use gestures or a diagram or some sort of prop that's in the scenario for you to be able to explain it in a different way. And then finally, they do want to test your basic science knowledge. So this won't be anything more advanced than what's covered in GCSE, but they want to test your ability to think on the spot and maybe if they catch you guard how you handle with that sort of situation. So don't be phased by it, just be prepared for it and know and prepare mentally for how you're going to handle it. So the way to tackle these explanation stations in the MMI interviews are to break it down into four stages in your mind. So the first one is always a strong introduction. So you want to go in there, tell them who you are, why you're there and ask for their permission to start explaining whatever it is to them. And then you want to set out your learning objectives where you essentially tell them in advance what it is you're going to explain. Stage two is the actual explanation itself where you'll be doing the bulk of the teaching. The third stage is that at some point you need to stop and check that they've understood that they're following you with your explanation. And then finally, we round off the scenario by either summarizing or giving them the opportunity to ask some questions. Now, what I'm gonna do is take you through all four of those stages in detail and show you how to deliver them in a confident and calm manner and maximize the marks when you do your interview. So the start is obviously how you kick off the scenario. And here you'll need to focus on how you enter the situation, whether that be virtually or in person. Then you need to think of your introduction and your opening lines. So when you walk into the room, make sure you seem upbeat, smile and make good eye contact. And if that is online, you have to make sure that you're looking down the barrel of the lens to give the illusion that you're looking them directly in the eye. And then give your name, your role, why you're there, and ask permission to talk to them about what you're proposing to discuss. And that will be something as simple as, hi, my name's Ashley Hilton. I'm a student who's currently here on work experience, and I've been asked to come here and explain to you how the heart works. Would that be okay with you? And my tip for this bit is, 
think about what the situation would be like in real life and how you would initiate it and just replicate exactly how you would do it if it was the real thing. The next is learning objectives. And this sounds like a very formalized way of basically what you're going to do is set out your aims and explain to them what the conversation is going to be about. And that involves two things. First, you need to understand what their current level of knowledge is and then explain to them that by the end of the conversation, what it is you're hoping that they will get out of it. So at that stage, once you're ready to move on to the bulk of the explanation, here is where you're going to deliver the information in the best possible way that you can explain it. One tip that I would say is check if there are any clues around the room that are gonna help you explain it, because in all likelihood, it means that they want you to use that to aid with your explanation. I'll come on to the checking element in a bit, but you periodically want to chunk the information and check. That means that you deliver bits of information in small chunks, check that they've actually understood what you're saying and then deliver your next chunk before checking again. So it's chunk, check, chunk, check and carry on like that. So to make your explanation easy to understand, there are a few things you need to bear in mind. The first is to use simple, relatable language that is free of jargon. Make sure you stick to the point. It's very tempting to show off your knowledge by going off on some tangent about how much you know, but it doesn't help them understand. So keeping your explanation short and concise is the best way to communicate effectively and score highly in these stations. So now that you've delivered your first chunk, it's time to actually check that they've understood what it is you're saying. Now be careful with checking of understanding because it is very easy for patients out of rapport and liking you to want to just agree or maybe they're embarrassed that they didn't understand. So the best way to get them to demonstrate that they've actually understood what you've said is to get them to repeat it back to you in your own words. Now, this is difficult to deliver in a way that doesn't come across patronizing, but the best way to do it is stop and say, could you just repeat back to me what you've understood so far? Another thing to be aware of at this stage of the station is that they may throw in or prime the actor to actually explain the thing back incorrectly to you as a kind of challenge to see how you cope with it. Now, the way to handle this is to firstly be encouraging of the things that they've got right and then just correct the areas that they weren't quite on the money by, by not being condescending and being very polite in the manner that you do it. And then once you've got through that stage, you are ready to close off the scenario and offer them the opportunity to ask any further questions. So here, just like in an essay, you shouldn't be introducing any new concepts that you haven't already discussed. And then it is their opportunity to ask you any questions about the subject matter that they might have. One important thing to know is that if they ask you a question that you don't know the answer to, don't lie. Just be very honest and say that you don't know and the idea or the trick in that situation is to give them a solution to how you're going to help them find the answer. So for example, if in a station, in the scenario you are, let's say in a GP practice and you've been asked to speak to a patient and you don't know the answer, well then the obvious solution would be, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go and ask the GP and then I'll, bring, I'll come back to you and tell you the answer. And then once that's done, you simply close the station by thanking the patient for their time. So just to summarize, there are four key steps that you need to have in your mind when you're delivering these explanation and teaching type stations in the MMI of your medicine interviews. And those are first starting the scenario by an introduction and setting out your learning outcomes. Then the bulk of the explanation. Remember the third stage is that we're chunking and checking to make sure that they're clear. And we do that by asking them to repeat back what they've understood. And then finally, we round off the scenario by offering them the opportunity to ask any questions and thanking them for their time. So just to give you some little bits of advice for these scenarios before we wrap up. Firstly, not to worry about the knowledge. It's stuff that you will definitely have covered and you should be able to ad lib a little bit about from GCSEs. It could also be things as simple as teaching a toddler how to play a game or explaining something or how it works to a, a young person. As I say, one of the most important things for scoring highly is familiarizing yourself with the scenario before you start, you start in that first minute and understanding the context. And again, the introduction really sets the tone for these scenarios. So come in with a really good explanation of who you are, why you're there, what you intend to explain to them, understanding what they know already, and then getting their permission. That, if you can do that and deliver it in a really strong way, that will really put you in good stead for scoring highly. Remember to always chunk and check by asking them to repeat back the information that they've understood to you. At that point, you may need to adapt your communication style to re-explain it in a different way. And don't be phased if this happens, that is just part of the examination to see how well you cope with that. And then finally, always round off with asking them questions or if they have any questions, 
and then thanking them for their time. So I'm really keen to hear from you. So if you have any questions about this or any other aspects of the medical school application process, pop them in the comments below. As I said, I've got lots of videos coming out thick and fast. So to make sure you don't miss them, hit subscribe down here and then hit the bell to make sure you get alerted when they come out. And I'll thank you once again for joining in and have yourself a blooming great day.